أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. پناہ مانتا ہوں اللہ کی شیطان مردود سے بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہ کے نام سے جو رحمان اور رحیم ہے Sisters and welcome to my show, Future Stars. I'm your host, Alvi Zaidi, and today we will be talking about animals. And I'm sure that many of you may have pets at home, so we will just be giving you a few facts about animals. And there's also going to be a quiz throughout the show. We'll be giving you a few stories of, with morals that occurred during the time of the Prophet, and also explaining a few morals through animals. And to share these stories with us and answer the quiz we have sister Kanza and she'll be joining in with the stories of course so to start off we will have sister Kanza and she'll be reading for us a story about the holy prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his experience with animals prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and animal rights in that age when men were often cruel to each other let alone to animals prophet Muhammad taught his companions that one should be kind to other living things animal or plant since they are all part of Allah's creations. Prophet Muhammad's mercy and compassion was so deep that animals, even plants, would benefit from his existence and their guardian. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to animals, said Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ride them when they are fit to be ridden and get off their backs when they are tired. Surely there are rewards for being kind and gentle to animals and for giving them water to drink. Islam has taught that in the eyes of the Almighty Allah, animals also have rights in the same way that a man has. They should not be treated badly, tortured, or left to starve without food or water. One day, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told his companions the story of two women. A bad woman was guided by Allah's truth and ultimately went to paradise because she gave water to a dog dying of thirst in the desert. While a dog was going round a well and was about to die of thirst, the bad woman saw it and took off her shoe and watered it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave her because of that good deed. And for the other woman, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, a woman was tortured and put in, the hell because a put in hell because of a cat which she had kept locked till it died of hunger. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, further said, you neither fed it nor water it when you locked it up, nor did you set it free to eat the insects of the earth. Prophet Muhammad said, A man walking along a path felt very thirsty. Reaching a well, he descended into it, drank his fill, and came back up. Then he saw a dog with its tongue hanging out, trying to lick up the mud to quench its excessive thirst. The man said, This dog is feeling the same thirst that I felt. So he went down into the well again, filled his shoe with water, and gave the dog a drink. So Almighty Allah forgave his sins. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was asked, O Messenger of Allah, are we rewarded for kindness towards animals? Prophet Muhammad replied, There is a reward for every kindness to every living animal or human. Prophet Muhammad was once performing wuzu prayers from a pot of water. A cat passed there and turned its eyes at the pot of water with a thirsty look. Prophet Muhammad realized at once that the cat was very thirsty, so he stopped the wudu and placed the pot before the cat. Only after the cat had fully quenched its thirst did Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, resume his wudu. By this action, Prophet Muhammad has shown that the quenching of thirst of even a small dumb animal is a noble act of virtue and should be given first attention before one offers prayers to the Allah Almighty. A man brought the chick of a bird to the gathering of Prophet Muhammad and his companions and they noticed that the parent of the chick was following it, flapping around it. When the man sat down, it, its parents threw itself upon the chick and did not concern itself with danger out of care towards its chick. This astonished the companions. Prophet Muhammad then turned to his companions and said, Are you amazed at this bird? You have taken its chick and threw itself into danger out of mercy for the chick. I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your Lord is more merciful to you than this bird is to its chick. Then he turned to the man and asked him to let the chick go. 
Masha, thank you very much. And thank you very much for sharing that story with us. So those were just a few collective stories all put together about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his treatment towards animals and also what he taught to others to treat animals alike. So to continue on with treatment of animals, I have a few facts here which talk about what the Quran says and also what we're instructed to do to help and care for animals. In the Quran, Surah 6, Ayah 38, it says, There is not an animal on earth, nor bird that flies on its wings, but they are in communities like you. Muslims believe that all living creatures were made from Allah. Allah live, loves all animals. Animals exist for the benefit of human beings, and animals must be treated with kindness and compassion. And we are instructed to avoid treating animals cruelly, overworking and overloading animals, neglecting them, hunting them for sport, Hunting for food is permitted if the animals are killed humanely, cutting the mane or a tail of a horse, animals fighting for a sport, or factory farming. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad said, Fear God with regard to animals. Ride them when they are fit to be ridden. And he also said that Islam has taught that in the eyes of Allah, animals also have rights in the same way as a man has. They should not be treated badly, tortured, or left to starve without food or water. So those are just a few facts regarding the treatment of animals. And now I'm going to move on to a few questions. And these questions are just facts about animals. And they're just facts that you may not know. So we're just, I'm just going to ask them to Sister Kanza and she'll be giving us the answers. And also, if anybody would like to phone in, the number's at the bottom of your screen. And you can phone in to ask a question. Maybe you'd like to comment on today's topic or even recite something. So the number's at the bottom of your screen. So first of all, I'm just going to ask a basic fact of Sister Kanza, where do pandas come from? Um, pandas originate from China. Masha, thank you very much. And can a boa constrictor's bite kill you? No, they kill their prey by squeezing them to death. Masha, and name three of the four bears that are native to Canada. Um, the black bear, the brown bear, the grizzly bear or polar bear. Mashallah, and where is Alligator Ali? Um, it's in Florida. Mashallah, thank you very much. So those weren't necessarily connected to Islam, but they were just a few facts about animals which you may not know. So just to give you some more information about animals. So now we're going to move on to another story that I have here. And these next few stories will just be stories with morals that you can portray in your own life, but they'll be using animals as examples throughout the story. So the first story that we have here is about the hare and the tortoise, and many of you may know this story already, but for those of you who don't, it's about a tortoise and a hare and a race. A tortoise one day met a hare who made fun of her. My, my, you move so slowly, you'll never get far. The tortoise was upset by the hare's manners and said, let's have a race to see who's faster. The hare laughed and said, you must be joking, but all right, we'll see who reaches the other side of the hill first. Off he ran, leaving the tortoise far behind. After a while, the hare stopped to wait for the tortoise to come along. He waited and waited until he felt sleepy. I might as well take a nap. He thought, even if she catches up with me, I can easily win the race. So he lay down under a shady tree and closed his eyes. When the tortoise passed the sleeping hare, she walked on slowly, but steadily. By the time the hare woke up, the tortoise was near the finishing line. He ran as fast as he could, but he could not catch up with the tortoise. In the end, the tortoise won the race. The moral of the story is slow and steady can win the race, which is just showing that you should pace yourself in life and take it slow instead of rushing everything to get everything done. So that was one story with a moral, and now we're going to move on to another story with a moral that Sister Kanza has for us, and this story is about the ant and the dove, and this has a moral just to explain something that we can portray in our own lives. The ant and the dove. One hot day, an ant was searching for some water. After walking around for some time, she came to a spring. To reach the spring, she had to climb up a blade of grass. While making her way up, she slipped and fell into the water. She could have drowned if a dove up a nearby tree had not seen her. 
Seeing that the ant was in trouble, the dove quickly plucked off a leaf and dropped it into the water near the struggling ant. The ant moved towards the leaf and climbed up the tree. Soon it carried her safely to dry ground. At the same time, a hunter nearby was throwing out his net towards the dove, hoping to trap it. Guessing what he was about to do, the ant quickly bit him on the heel. Feeling the pain, the hunter dropped his net. The dove was quick to fly away to safety. And the moral of this story is, one good turn deserves another. Masha, thank you very much. And thank you very much for sharing that story with us. So that was just another story with a moral to explain something that we can use in our own lives, but through the example of animals. And now we're going to move on to a few more questions from the quiz. And first of all, I'd like to ask Sister Kanza, are penguins part of a polar bear's diet? Um, no, penguins are down on the South Pole and polar bears are on the North Pole. Masha, thank you very much. And which elephant has tusks? The, the Indian elephant or the African elephant? The African elephant has tusks. Mashallah. And how many different types of snakes are there in Ireland? Um, there are no snakes in Ireland. Mashallah. And why is a chimpanzee not a monkey? Because chimps have no tails. Mashallah, thank you very much. And thank you very much for answering those questions for us. So just a few more basic facts about animals. And now we're going to move on to a story that I have here. And this is about, this is a bit more about the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And this is just to talk about an event that occurred. So a man once came to the Prophet carrying with him his belongings in a box. He said, O oh Prophet, while I was passing through a jungle, I heard the voice of some birds' chicks. I took them and put them in this box. The moment I did that, their mother came down, fluttering around my head. And the Prophet says, put them down. When the man put the box on the ground, the mother of the young birds joined them. Seeing this, the Prophet asked the man, who now had a look of surprise on his face, are you surprised by the affection of a mother towards her young? I swear by Almighty Allah who has sent me, surely God is more loving to his servants than a mother to these young birds. Return these baby birds to the place where you took them and let their mother be with them. So that's just a small story to show an event that occurred during the Prophet's life. And this was just explaining about the love of Allah, comparing it to the love of a mother and her children, even within the animal kingdom. So now we're going to move on to another story with a moral using animals as examples. And this one is about the monkey and the dolphin. And Sister Kanza will be sharing this with us. One day long ago, some sailors set out to sea in their sailing ship. One of them brought this, his pet monkey along for the long journey. When they were far out at sea, a terrible storm overturned their ship. Everyone fell into the sea and the monkey was sure that he would drown. Suddenly, a dolphin appeared and picked him up. They soon reached the island and the monkey came down from the dolphin's back. The dolphin asked the monkey, do you know this place? The monkey replied, yes, I do. In fact, the king of the island is my best friend. Do you know that I am actually a prince? Knowing that no one lived on the island, the dolphin said, well, well, so you are a prince. Now you can be a king. The monkey asked, how can I be a king? As the dolphin started swimming away, he answered, that is easy. As you are the only creature on this island, you will naturally be the king. Moral, those who lie and boast may end up in trouble. Masha, thank you very much. And thank you very much for sharing that story with us. So that was just another moral story being shown through animals with an example. And this one was talking about lying and boasting. So it just shows that you shouldn't be lying or boasting as sometimes that can lead you into trouble, which would be much worse than if you were just to tell the truth. So now we're going to move on to another story with a moral and this one's about the wolf and the lamb and it's just going to explain about being gentle and weak compared to fierce and strong. A lamb was grazing with a flock of sheep one day. She soon found some sweet grass at the edge of the field. Farther and farther she went away from the others. She was enjoying herself so much that she did not notice a wolf coming near to her. However, when it caught her, she quick started to plead, please, please, don't eat me yet. My stomach is full of gra grass. If you wait a while, it will taste much better. The wolf thought that this was a good idea, so he sat down and waited. After a while, the lamb said, if you allow me to dance, the grass in my stomach will be digested faster. Again, the wolf agreed. While the lamb was dancing, she, knew she had a new idea. She said, please take the bell from around my neck. If you ring it as hard as you can, I'll be able to dance even faster. 
dwarf took the bell and rang it, and the shepherd heard the bell ringing and quickly sent his dogs to find the missing lamb. The barking dogs frightened the wolf away and saved the lamb's life. The moral is that sometimes being gentle and weak can be more smart than fierce and strong. So that story was just explaining how the lamb was being slow in what she was doing and finding new ideas instead of immediately saying, just don't eat me yet. So that's just another moral with an example. And now we're going to move on to a story that Sister Kanza has, and this one's about the fox and the stork. The fox and the stork. A selfish fox once invited a stork to dinner at his home in a hollow tree. That evening, the stork flew into the fox's home and knocked on the door with his long beak. The fox opened the door and said, please come in and share my food. The stork was invited to sit down at the table. She was very hungry and the food smelt delicious. The fox served soup in shallow bowls and he licked up all his soup very quickly. However, the stork could not have any of it as the bowl was too shallow for her long beak. The poor stork just smiled politely and stayed hungry. The selfish fox asked, Stork, why haven't you taken your soup? Don't you like it? The stork replied, It was very kind of you to invite me for dinner. Tomorrow evening, please join, join me at dinner at my home. The next day, when the fox arrived at the stork's home, he saw that they were also having soup for dinner. This time, the soup was served in tall jugs. The stork drank the soup easily, but the fox could not reach inside the tall jug. This time it was his turn to go hungry. The moral of this story is that a selfish act can backfire on you. Masha, thank you very much. And thank you very much for sharing that story with us. So just another story with a moral using animals as an example. And this one was just to talk about a selfish act can backfire on you. So it's showing that you should be kind towards others and think of other people than just yourself as it may come to harm you in later, later, on, later on. So now we're going to go into a short break and after the break you can join us for some more stories about animals and also a lot more facts and then also we will be doing a craft at the end of the show and we'll be teaching you how to make an origami cat and we'll be teaching you how to make that so join us after the break for some more information about animals. Sisters, and welcome back to Future Stars. I'm your host, Alvi Zaidi, and today we've been talking about animals and animals in the psalm. So, just let me reintroduce my guest, as today we have Sister Kanza. And previously on the show, we've just been talking about animals, the treatment of animals. Also, we've been talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his attitude towards animals. And we've also been doing a quiz throughout the show, um, asking general questions about animals, just to give you some general knowledge. And also, I'd just like to remind that if anybody would like to phone in, then the number's at the bottom of your screen, and you can call in to ask a question, maybe comment on today's topic, or even just recite something, so the number's at the bottom of your screen. And we've been giving you a few stories about morals, using animals as examples, but before we continue on with that, we're just going to go through a few more questions. So first of all, I'd like to ask Sister Kanza, how many hearts does a gorilla have? Um, one like most other animals. Mashallah. And what is a jackalope? Um, a fantasy rabbit with antlers. Mashallah, thank you very much. And where do meerkats come from? Africa. And are aardvarks native to the USA? Um, no, they're from Africa as well, but most people end up confusing them from the armadillo, which is from southern USA. Mashallah, thank you very much. And how do musk ox defend, defend themselves? Um, the males form a circle facing outwards to protect the females and the young ones. Marsha, thank you very much. And where would you find a dodo bird? Um, you wouldn't. They have been extinct for years. Marsha, thank you very much. And what land animal is Sable Island and Can in Canada noted for? Um, wild horses, because they arrived probably from the Spanish shipwrecks in the days gone by. Marsha, and are there tigers in India? 
yeah. Marsha, thank you very much. And those were just a few more general knowledge questions, just so you can have a few more facts about animals. And now we're going to move on to a story that I have here. And this is about Prophet Solomon. And this, he was one of our prophets and he was very strongly involved with animals. So this is just about the ant. Once there was a big famine in Palestine. It was during the time of the prophet, Prophet Solomon. He came out with his people and proceeded to, to an open place in the desert to pray for the rains to come. Suddenly he saw an ant standing on its two legs, raising its hands towards the sky and saying, O oh Allah, we are, very but, we are but very small amongst all thy creatures. We cannot survive without thy grace. Please bestow upon us thy sustenance and do not punish us because of the sins of the human beings. Please send down the rain so that trees can grow, farms can become green, and grains become available, and we have our food to eat. Prophet Solomon knew the language of all animals. He told his people, let us go home, the prayer of this ant is enough. It then rained heavily and all the land became green and productive. The ant is an intelligent creature. During, it, during warm days it collects and stores grain inside the holes. It knows that during wet and cold months, it could not be able to go out and search for food. For fear that grain may start growing because of wetness, it splits it into two or more pieces. At times during moonlit nights, it brings the split grains out of the stores for drying and preservation against decay. The holes under the ground are made very carefully and covered with shelter to prevent rainwater from getting inside them. The ant, unlike, or unlike other animals, can lift a burden twice its own weight. It is not a selfish creature. When an ant finds some store of food grains, it runs up to its group and takes the fellow ants to that place. It shows every one of them its own to find the store. They always behave in this manner. They work and live in cooperation with each other. This is how the ant works for the group and how each of them fulfills the needs and livelihoods of its fellow beings. How shameful it is for man who has not regarded another man who has no concern for his fellow human beings who could be starving because of want of food. Once, when Prophet, Muhammad, Prophet Suleiman was travelling with hosts of men and birds, they reached the valley of ants. When the chief of these ants witnessed the pomp and glory of which Prophet Suleiman and his companions were approaching towards it, he warned all the ants to get into their holes lest they not be trampled and crushed unknowingly by the approaching men. Prophet Suleiman smiled at this warning sounded by, ants and by the ant's chief and ordered his companions to wait until the ant went inside their holes. None of us should hurt any ant while passing over the land. It is said that Prophet Suleiman addressed the chief of ants and said, How could my people hurt you or your fellow ants when they were floating through air? Do you not know I am, the mess I am one of the messengers of God and would never act unfairly? The chief of the ants replied, O oh, Prophet, my cautioning of the ants was not for any hurt that they would suffer, but to prevent them getting astray and forgetting the glory of God after seeing your pomp and show. So that was just a story about an event that occurred during Prophet Suleiman's life and about his interaction with the ant, and also giving you a few information pieces about an ant. So now we're going to move on to a story that Sister Cantor has for us. And previously on the show, we were giving you stories about animals with morals. So now Sister Cantor will be reading us one of those stories. The Thirsty Cow. One hot day, a thirsty cow flew all over the fields looking for water. For a long time, she could not find any. She felt very weak, almost giving up hope. Suddenly, she saw a water jug below her. She flew straight down to see if there was any water inside. Yes, she could see some water inside the jug. The crow tried to push her head into the jug. Um, so sadly, she found that the neck of the jug was too narrow. Then she tried to push the jug down for the water to flow out. She found the jug was too heavy. The crow thought hard for a while. Then, look, then looking around her, she saw some pebbles. She suddenly had a very good idea. She started picking up the pebbles one by one, dropping each into the jug. As more and more pebbles filled the jug, the water level kept rising. Soon enough, it was high enough for the crow to drink. Her plan had worked. Moral, if you try hard enough, you may soon find an answer to your problem. 
Mashallah, thank you very much. And thank you very much for sharing that story with us. So that was just another story with a moral that we can portray in our own lives, showing that if we work hard enough, we can actually get what we want and deserve. So, and that was just using a thirsty crow as an example. And now we're going to move on to a few more questions from the quiz. So first of all, I'd like to ask Sister Kanza, what kind of monkeys would you find in the Dominican Republic? Um, there are no monkeys in the Dominican Republic. Masha, thank you very much. And are toucans native to Japan? Um, no, toucans are native of Central America. Masha, and Hannibal's army crossed the Alps to attack Rome. What type of animal accompanied, accompanied the army? Um, elephants. Masha, and the ancient Egyptians had the strongest affinity for what type of animal? Cats. Masha, thank you very much. And thank you very much for answering those questions for us. So those were just a few more general knowledge questions about animals. And now we're going to move on to another story about, about animals with a moral. And this story is about the fox and the grapes. It was a sunny day and the fox was walking across the fields. Soon he came to a vineyard. As he came nearer, he could see some bunches of grapes. The fox looked carefully around him. He had to make sure that he was safe from all the hunters. He decided to steal, bef steal some before anyone came along. He jumped upwards and he still could not reach the grapes. He jumped again as high as he could and he still could not reach them. The grapes were just too high. He was not ready to give up. He backed off, took some running steps and leapt into the air towards the grapes. But again, he failed to reach them. It was getting dark and he was getting angry. His legs hurt with all the running and jumping. At last, he stopped trying. As he walked away, he said to himself, I don't really want those grapes. I'm sure they're too sour to eat anyway. The moral is, sometimes when we can't get what we want, we pretend that it's not worth having. So that's just another moral, with us, just using animals as an example, just showing you what sort of personality many people in today's age have. So now we're going to move on to a last moral story that Sister Kansa has for us, and this is about the ant and the grasshopper. The ant and the grasshopper. One cold, frosty day in the middle of a winter, a colony of ants were busy drying out some grains of corn which had grown damp over the wet autumn weather. A grasshopper, half dead with cold and hunger, came up to one of the ants. Please give me a grail or two from your store of corn to save my life, he said faintly. We worked day and night to get this corn in. Why should I give it to you, said the ant crossly. Whatever you were doing all last summer when you should have been gathering your food. Oh, I didn't have time for things like that, said the grasshopper. I was far too busy singing to carry, to carry corn about. The ant laughed and kindly. In that case, you can sing all winter as far as I'm concerned, he said. And without another word, he turned back to his work. Moral, Islam teaches us that we should help the less fortunate, but it also teaches us that we must work hard and not rely on the kindness of others for our daily deeds. Marshall, thank you very much, and thank you very much for sharing that story with us. So that was just one more story with a moral using animals as an example, and that story is just to show that we shouldn't be relying on others to fulfill our needs. So now we're going to be moving into our craft section and we'll be making these origami cats to go with our last question in the quiz which was about the ancient Egypt cats. So we'll be just showing you how to make these in our arts and crafts section. <laughs> And we will be showing you how to make these origami, origami cats and we'll just be showing you how to make these using origami and we've done origami before and it's just simply using a square piece of paper and we're chosen a yellow piece of paper and Sister Kanza, our guest today, will be joining in with our craft today and this is really simple and anyone can make this, you can make this really quick, you can possibly use this maybe to stick on a card and to give it to a friend or maybe just make some with your friends so we'll be showing you how to make these these origami cat with using a square piece of paper so the first step you need to do is fold it in half diagonally so we'll be taking one corner to the other corner and you just need to fold that down and just crease it 
and then what you need to do is fold it so now you should have your shape like this and what you need to do is take the bottom corner and fold it over to the next corner so just be doing that like so and you're just going to fold it down and you're just going to crease it and then so you should have your shape like this and then what you're going to do is just open it out again like so and then as you can see there's a line in the middle from where you creased it down so now what you need to do is take one point off the bottom and as if you're going to fold it into the center but instead you're just going to bring it out a little bit so the corner sticks out so folding it from the bottom corner instead of folding it all the way to the center you'll just be bringing it out a little bit like so and then just creasing that down and then what you need to do is do exactly the same for the other one so you're just going to take the other corner like so and it's so as if you're going to be folding it into the center but you're just going to bring it out a little bit and just crease it down like so so your shape should look like that at the moment and then what you need to do is take this top corner here and you're just going to fold that down only by a couple of centimeters or so and just going to fold that and crease that down and then so you should have your shape like this so you brought up the two corners and then folded down the bottom corner and then what you're going to do is just turn it around so there you have your basic shape of the cat so here's the one we made earlier and then here's the one now so there's your basic shape and now what you do is just taking your pen you're just going to draw on the features of the cat and we'll just do that and show you so you just draw on a simple nose and of course you can so there we've just drawn on a simple nose and then and then I'm just going to fill in the eyes so so you can see we filled in the features using our pen so there you can see just our simple features of a cat and of course you can decorate it with different colors we've just used a basic black pen but of course you can use different colors maybe you can do a different color cat and so you can see our two cats here and you can make them different shapes we've added in the whiskers and you can obviously decorate it if you use a smaller square piece of paper you'll have a smaller cat and if you use a larger one then you'll have a large cat and that's just a really simple way to make an origami cat and it's a really fun craft that you can do with your friends and maybe when you're at school you can just make these with your friends so that's our finished look and sister Kanza made hers so Masha, that looks really good and Masha, thank you very much for joining in with us today and that finishes off today's craft and also finishes off today's show so thank you very much for watching and first of all I'd like to say thank you very much to Sister Kanza for joining in with all the stories and the quiz and also with the craft and thank you very much for watching and I hope you know you now know a few more things about animals a bit more about of what Islam has to say about the treatment of animals and also this origami today so thank you for watching I'm your host Al Ghazadi and this was Future Stars with Afis